Hello Year 9. So we are starting a new topic on nutritional needs. Um, looking today specifically at the different life stages and their nutritional needs and um, kind of as we progress through our lives. So just have a quick look at those five shapes. They're obviously all made up of different colours and lines. And just have a think, are they all the same? Do you think they needed exactly the same things to make them? The same colour, amount of colour, time, all that kind of stuff. And now we're going to apply that same kind of thought process to people. So obviously everyone is an individual, everyone is different, and so our needs will all differ slightly from one to another. But um, each life stage will need similar things, even though you are different from other people within that life stage. Um, and just like for us as an individual, our needs will change over time. And we require different amounts of certain nutrients at different points in our life in order to thrive. And by thrive, I mean our body work and function as well as it can do. There are also some lifestyle um, kind of changes, choices associated with each age group, and they will also have an impact on your nutritional needs. There are going to be loads of exceptions, um, and we're going to look at some other nutritional needs of different kind of groups of people in the coming weeks. But today we're just focusing on those kind of different age ranges. So we're going to have a look at young children, children, adolescents, adults, and older adults. Your first task is you're going to use the resources um, that are on the assignments tab on Teams to produce a TikTok profile for the different life stages. There's a template in the on the assignment section of Teams and you're going to accurately input the appropriate information for each life stage. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that now. So this um, on the left hand side is the uh, template. On the right hand side I've opened up one of the resources. Um, if I zoom back out you'll see it's just you scroll through there's all the different life stages on there you will find there are a couple of different options in terms of the resources for you to use. The information is very similar across all of them, but the layout and how it's formatted is a little bit different, and so you might find one more useful than the other. I'll leave that up to you to decide which one you want to use. So you're essentially kind of cherry-picking the correct pieces of information and transporting it into this profile. At the top, so you can see there's lots of different templates there, at the top, all these red arrows are just there to direct you to the different sections that need to be completed. Don't complete it on the arrow one, complete the work on the ones with no arrows. So where it says life stage, you would type in children, for example, that's spelled correctly. Um, a picture, you can insert an image, obviously if you can actually insert it into the circle, by all means do so, otherwise just put it over the top, it doesn't have to be a circle. And then you can put your life stage here again. So you might just write children. And then age range, five to 12 years. Obviously you can adjust the size and things as you go through, but it's not massively, not too much of an issue. Now, if you come to a section and the answer isn't in the resource you've got open, you can either open one of the other resources or you can ask Mr. Google. So if you type into Google, so I've just typed in how many kilocalories per day should a child eat? And then you find a resource that is going to be reputable. So that means like the NHS website is a fantastic one. And please make sure they are a UK website. So it will say .co.uk at the end because all of the um, kind of advice and guidance around nutrition varies from country to country. So if I click on this website, you'll see you can find approximate kilocalories for different age groups and you will just have to take an average from that because we're obviously looking at an age range rather than a specific age and again you can take an average or just pick to do boys or girls. On that topic um, the difference between boys and girls or men and women if you're doing the older um, age groups you, ha you have to think that we're looking at that group of people as an average and most 
um, boys, most men are larger in size and have more muscle than most girls and most women. There are going to be lots of exceptions to that, but generally speaking, when we're talking about a whole group of people, we have to generalise a little bit. Um, and so that's why we can't be massively specific and say, well, this type of girl, this, that type of boy, that. So if I go back to the example, the main section where you're going to kind of properly get your teeth into finding the information out about the different groups these sections at the bottom so it talks about macronutrient requirements micronutrient requirements and other important information so macronutrients if you think back to last year your macronutrients are the nutrients you need in a large um, amount so they're your carbohydrates your proteins and your fats so you would then find one two three all of them all of those nutrients in your resource so for example in this one they're in this table here and you would write them write down why they need them so you would write protein um, to help them grow and repair the body all right then you go down to carbohydrate etc you would then move across to micronutrients and micronutrients we need in very small amounts hence micro but they are very very important and they're your vitamins and your minerals so for example for children you might write calcium for healthy teeth and bone development okay the other important information it could be any of these extra bullet points on here there are lots of bullet points on the other one but I want you to really try and push yourself and it also links with this box here and have a look at specific deficiencies that that age group is kind of susceptible to. So by deficiencies, it means something that they've not got enough in their diet and it could lead to um, potentially disease. It could lead to kind of a whole host of symptoms. And that's what I want you to add into this other information box. All right. Once you've finished your um, profiles, you're then going to move on to the second task and you're going to come up with a lunch dish that is suitable for teenagers or adolescents your dish has to meet some certain criteria so it has to be suitable to be eaten at lunchtime it's obviously a lunch dish it needs to be something that most teenagers would happily choose to eat you're not going to be able to make something suitable for everyone but that would be appropriate for teenagers and then thirdly it has to meet some of the specific nutritional requirements of that age group. So the best way to do that is find three of those nutrients. They can be macronutrients or micronutrients that you've mentioned on your profile. And you need to make sure some foods that are good sources of those nutrients are included in your dish. There are three different ways you can do this task. You can either sketch out your idea um, and annotate it or label the different parts of it why they're there what nutrients they provide you can bullet point the parts of the dish um, and explain why you've included them or you can write a pa paragraph get my teeth in write a paragraph explaining the different parts of your dish i don't mind how you choose to do this task um, so pick whichever one you feel most comfortable doing all right thank you and i